Hi, welcome to the Knife Farmhouse. I'm Leanne, and if you're new to my channel, I do cooking and baking from scratch, canning, and dehydrating videos. If that sort of thing interests you, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And today, we are participating in November. November is a month-long collaboration hosted by Linda at Tulu Creates, and every day we'll be giving you a recipe using dough. How exciting is that? Like, I can think of a hundred things off the top of my head that using dough. And making it from scratch is so rewarding and so good. And so you want to go check out Linda's channel if you haven't done so already. And I know most of you come from her channel to my channel when I first started out. So I'm grateful for Linda for helping me get started on YouTube. Make sure you check out all the other channels in this collaboration. Tell them Leanne sent you. And make sure you're commenting on their November videos for your chance at a prize at the end of the month that Linda will have on her channel on December 1st. With that all being said, let's get started. We're making apple dumplings from a Mennonite Pennsylvania Dutch cookbook. This recipe came highly recommended, so I'm excited to try it and let's get started, shall we? To make the dough for the apple dumplings, we're gonna need a half a teaspoon of salt, two cups of all-purpose flour, two-thirds cup of shortening, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and a half cup of milk. And you're gonna need six medium-sized apples that are baking apples. I'm using stamen. Gala apples would be also good, or Corklands or John of Golds. You want a good firm apple. Granny Smith would also work well in this. I wouldn't recommend Honeycrisp just because they're so expensive or Pink Ladies or Red Delicious or Golden Delicious because they just wouldn't hold up to baking. For the syrup, you're going to need two cups of water, a quarter cup of butter, two cups of brown sugar, and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon or nutmeg and that's optional. But who wouldn't want cinnamon in a nutmeg good for apple dumplings? First things first, you want to preheat your oven to 375. And then we're gonna make the syrup so it has time to cool down and it won't be so hot when you pour it over the apples. All right, we're gonna add our water, cinnamon, first cup of brown sugar, and second cup of brown sugar. All right, <laughs> I reread the instructions for the second time and realized I put the butter in way too soon. All right, the recipe says to cook for five minutes and remove heat and add the butter. All right, now that we're smoking, yeah. All right. We'll get myself together here today. I guess you'll know that, you know, my head's probably spinning in five different directions this early in the morning this week. All right, so we're gonna, we have added the sugar, the water, and the cinnamon to the pan and we're gonna cook this five minutes. We're gonna be washing our apples because when they harvest them, they dip them in wax to keep them from going bad. So you wanna make sure you get that off and also the pesticides that they might've used to make them look pretty for you. So then you wanna peel them. And when I peel apples, I always think of Sleepless in Seattle or Tom Hanks, when he's describing his wife, says that her wife was so perfect that he, she could peel an apple in one peel. And that line, you know, that's a tearjerker in itself. And let's see if I can actually do that on camera. No pressure for folks, right? All right, there we go. Tom Hanks, this is for you. And we're sleepless in Seattle. All right, let's take our core and get the core out. All right, I'll be back when I'm ready for the next step. All right, we're gonna remove the saucepan from the burner. And then we're going to add the butter this time. <laughs> we're going to let this cool down 
and we're gonna make our dough now. Directions say to sift your flour, your salt, and your baking powder. There's the flour and the mess on the counter. All right, we need two and a half teaspoons. There's the half, first teaspoon, and second teaspoon of baking powder. Then we need a half a teaspoon of salt. Then we're gonna cut in our shortening. And for two thirds of a cup of shortening, I just use a one third measure. Then using a pastry blender or two forks, you wanna cut your shortening in and you want your dough to be like a pea shape when you're done cutting it in. It just may take a couple moments of patience, but you'll get there. And maybe a couple messes on the counter too. <laughs> Let me know what your favorite eating apple is or your favorite apple to bake. I would love to hear from you down in the comments down below. All right, you want to treat this like biscuits. Very tender and don't overwork. All right, I think the shortening is well incorporated. Now we're just gonna put a little bit of milk in at a time because you might not use it all. And you're just gonna knead it in. The directions say sprinkle milk over the mixture Press together lightly and work the dough only enough to get it to hold together. I think that's why people get so upset when stuff doesn't turn out because they're following the recipe to the T and not working it themselves and knowing when to stop. All right, do you think we need more milk? Make sure you're pressing lightly. <laughs> I'm trying to knead it like dough. Oh, oh wait, this is November. Divide it into six pieces here, and we'll roll one at a time. Right, maybe I'm getting the hang of it now. <laughs> oh. All right, I haven't made these in a while, so I think I'm learning as I'm teaching you. <laughs> so maybe, maybe this isn't, you know, a how to do like I normally do, but you know, we're learning. So you want to make sure your surface is well floured and your rolling pin is well floured to get it rolled out. Then you wanna put your apple in the middle there and take your spatula, put it through somewhere. And just roll it up the sides. And there you go. One apple dumpling for the pan.
All right, I had to make a second batch of the dough. I think it was either because my apples are just way too big because because they look huge. And also maybe I was rolling them out too thick. But anyway, I got this dough and I did add up, add in all the milk and that might make it rolling out easier. Put out our flour. everything. All right. So we just want to roll it up. And put it in the pan. And let, I don't know what is happening there. Might need to put a patch on the bottom because cinnamon and sugar is running out. All right. We'll just throw that on top of our hole. All right. See, you don't have to worry. It'll still be good in the end. Add our syrup. You wanna make sure they get coated with the syrup. And make sure you don't get it on your counter because I'm sure you'll love to clean up that mess. Right. Then we're going to put it in our 375 degree oven until done, which will probably be at least 40 minutes. I think they might go longer because they're so big. I think I say this every time. I wish I had smell a vision and you could come over and taste this. They were so good. Like I couldn't eat it pretty. All right. You definitely want to let these cool off for at least 20 minutes before you might want to put your mouth on one of these, but don't they look scrumptious? Oh my. These definitely look like they were worth that effort, even though I thought I was struggling. So I hope you enjoy these. I wish I could get you a taste test, but I have to get going and get this edited up for you. And my husband is loading a tractor trailer right now of 700 bales. And yes, thank goodness we got him some help today. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you stay and watch some more of my videos. And I'm sure you'll find something you enjoy making. And remember, God gave you a great day. Now go good do something great with it.